I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Uh, today's topic will be a continuation of rational numbers, uh, but primarily their representation as decimal fractions. Well, first of all, what do we actually mean when we are saying that something is a decimal fraction? Well, everybody kind of has uh, an intuitive understanding that 2.51 is um, some kind of a number which is uh, expressed as a, as a decimal, um, uh, decimal number with fractions. Um, let's be a little bit more concrete with uh, our definition. Well, first of all, uh, we see that any decimal fraction, decimal number with fractions, um, contains certain number of decimal digits from 0 to 9. Uh, at, at, at the limiter, if you wish, which um, separates integer part from, from the fractional part. Uh, usually it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a dot in the United States and in some other countries. Uh, in Europe, in many countries, it's a comma. Well, whatever it is, let's just call it a separator that will be a neutral name. Um, then there is an optional sign, which you can put in front of it, um, but again, considering that this is, uh, uh, if, if there is no sign, then the plus sign is assumed, we can always say that in the beginning we always have some kind of a sign, plus or minus. Um, now, what's on the left is pretty much defined. What's on the right of the separator, which separates integer from the fractional part, is much more interesting. And here is why. Um, we are talking about rational numbers. And if you want to represent a rational number 1, 7, or in my more formal uh, description, representation rather, it's uh, a combination of two integers with a bar in between. Um, if you will try to express this particular rational number um, as a decimal uh, fraction, you will actually see something like this. One, four, two, eight, five, seven, and then we'll repeat one, four, two, eight, five, seven, etc., etc. So a certain number of digits um, is repeated infinite number of times. So first of all, what we can say about decimal numbers is that to the right, we can have an infinite number of digits. To the right of the separator, which separates integer from, uh, from fract fractional part. So, infinite number of decimal digits, that's very, very important. And here is why. We will use these decimal fractions not only to represent rational numbers, but also uh, non-rational, uh, irrational, actually, numbers, um, which uh, uh, I actually have another lecture which is dedicated to uh, irrational numbers. Rational and irrational altogether are called real numbers. So basically, representation using decimal fractions is uh, allow it, it allows you to represent more than just rational numbers. It also allows to represent non-rational ones. So all rational are basically uh, uh, expressed in this particular form or in this. Irrational are not expressed in this particular form. But what's interesting is that both of them are represented as, as decimal fractions. But here is an important difference, and that's what I'm going to actually dedicate this lecture and the next one to. If we are dealing with rational numbers, then even if um, this sequence to the right of the separator is infinite, you can always find a period which will repeat many times, infinite number of times actually which is a certain number of decimal digits, which is repeated one uh, time after another. Now, um, I will uh, spend some time uh, in this lecture precisely for these type of cases. Okay, so first of all, we have defined what is um, 
a decimal representation using decimal fractions. So secondly, what we want to make sure that we understand that if this number of digits to the right of the separator is finite, then it's definitely a rational number. And here is why. When we are dealing with this representation of the number, um, what's important is that every digit, based on its place, has certain weight. So, digits to the left of um, separator have weight 1, 10, 100, etc. Every position multiplies by 10. Digits to the right of the separator have weight 110, 100s, 1000s, etc. Now, this does not go to infinity. This is a finite number of digits because we are not dealing with infinite uh, numbers which do not have a, a specific uh, value. But uh, to the right, we can have an infinite sequence. And um, let me give you an example. Uh, let's say we're dealing with 0 0.111, etc., etc. What does it actually mean? Using this decimal representation and using these weights, it's basically, uh, well, integer part is 0, so let's just um, talk about the fractional part. It's 1 with a weight 1 tenths plus another one with the weight one hundredths plus another one with the weight one thousandths etc. up to infinity. That's what it means. Well obviously uh, we can drop these ones so it's a sum of certain uh, numbers each one of them is exactly ten times smaller than the previous one. Now, um, here is some kind of a generalization of this. If we want to deal with these sequences, which contain uh, numbers which are um, decreasing by certain uh, ratio, in this case by a ratio of 10, um, we can actually summarize uh, to get the value of this sum, even if the number of these uh, elements is infinite. And, and here is how. Let's consider a more general um, um, problem. The problem is, if you have to have, if you have to summarize these numbers, q, q squared, q cube, etc., etc., and let's assume that the q is less than 1. Like in this particular case, Q is one tenth because every time next number is exactly multiple of the previous times Q. So we start with one tenth times one tenth, one hundred, one hundredths times one tenth, one thousandths, etc. Now let's assume this is a finite sequence. So the end is Q to the nth degree. Now I can give you exactly the formula for what this particular sum is, and um, I can ask you to prove it as an uh, exercise for mathematical induction. Um, and for those who are interested, uh, there is another lecture on mathematical induction which has, uh, which Unisor has. Now, um, I will do it slightly differently, um, just, just a little trick if you wish. Let's do it this way. We will multiply this sum by q. We will have s times q equals... Now, since q multiplied by a sum, you can break it down using distributive law of uh, mm, multiplication uh, over the summation. You can multiply each uh, element by this q. So we'll have q squared, q cubed, q to the fourth, etc q to the n, and the last number will be n plus 1. q n times q will be n plus 1, right? So, we multiply the, uh, the left and right part of this 
um, equation by Q, and that's what we get. Now, if I will subtract from one to another, what will be? S minus SQ will be S times 1 minus Q, right? Now, but here, what's interesting is this and this, this and this, this and this, they will nullify each other. So what's left? We have Q minus Q to the N plus first. Now, again, what's important is that Q is less than 1. As N tends to infinity, this particular element, since Q is less than 1, and we are multiplying by itself, so the number is multiplied by something which is um, less than 1. By the way, when I'm talking about less than 1, I still mean positive, so it's from 0 to 1. Uh, let's say it's 1 half. Something is multiplied by 1 half, which, which means it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and obviously it tends to 0. So this particular member tends to 0. So what's left? For infinite sum, we have only this part. So, let me put it here. S times 1 minus Q equals Q and S is equal to Q divided by 1 minus Q. So, for an infinite number of elements in this sequence, like in this particular case, this is the result of summation. Now, using this, let's apply it to this particular case, 1 tenth. Well, if Q is 1 ten, then we will have what? We will have S is equal to 1 tenth over 1 minus 1 tenth, which is 9 tenths, which is 1 ninth. Well, obviously, for everybody, 0 0.111111 is exactly 1 over 9. Uh, because if you will multiply by 9, you will have 0 0.999, infinite number of 9s, which means that the whole number is infinitely close to 1. So if you have really uh, uh, going to the limit, you will get basically 1. So that's why the representation of the number 1 as 1.0 or 0 0.99, etc., 9, etc., infinite number of times, these are actually equivalent, but this is a decimal fraction which has a period, and 9 is actually a period. This is another representation, so we have certain um, duality, I would say, of representation of certain numbers. They can be represented one way or another in decimal. Yes, obviously this one is preferable, and that's how people do. However, this one still has its own right to existence. Now, there are certain numbers which you cannot represent as a, a finite decimal number. For instance, I was telling you about one seventh. Now, we were talking about uh, infinite fractions and fractions which have period. But I would like to uh, prove right now that any periodic decimal fraction or decimal number with fractional part, which has a period, uh, is always rational, which means it's always represented as basically some kind of a one over something else, two integers. Um, okay, how can we prove that easily? Let's consider a general case of a decimal number with a fractional part which has a period. Um, probably an example would be a better um, case, and uh, here is why. 
for instance, you have 0 0.2 and then the period. I will use the same uh, sequence of 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7 because I remember as well. Um, maybe I will tell you why sometimes. Um, but in any case, this is a typical representation of a decimal number which after a certain point has a period. And by the way, I have actually calculated it beforehand. I put a little plan for myself here. This is 15 over 70 in my uh, uh, in my formal representation. Or if you wish, it's 1570s, which is the same, by the way. You can um, uh, reduce it by 5, right? It will be 3 over uh, 14, right? So, for those who are interested, you can start and divide 3 over 14, and you will get exactly this. First, you will have 0, obviously, then 2, and then 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, etc. They will repeat up to infinity. So anyway, this is an example of a periodic um, decimal number. And uh, before proving that this is uh, a rational number, I'd like to simplify my, my job a little bit. First of all, is it important that there is this, this 0.2 in the beginning? Well, actually not. Because uh, obviously it, it is 0 0.2 plus 0 0.0 and then the period. Right? Now, any finite uh, decimal number is definitely rational. Because, as I was saying, it's represented a certain number of digits with certain number of weights. Every digit is like 0, for instance, has a weight 0, has a weight 1, plus 2 has a weight 1 tenth, right? Because this is on the left of the, uh, of the decimal separator, and this is on the right of the se separator. Then, whatever else doesn't really exist, but weights are 100, 1000, and in this case, weights are 10 and 100, etc. So, since each member is rational, and uh, as you know, rational number um, are completely closed as far as their um, summation and multiplication are, obviously the whole thing is rational. So every finite decimal number is rational, so this is rational. So to prove that this one is rational on the top, I really have to prove that this one is rational, right? Because the sum will be rational. Now, again, to prove that this is rational, is this zero important here? Well, actually, no. Because as we know, every position has a weight. This is one tenth, this is one hundredth, etc. What if I will consider 0 0.142857? Now, in this case, one used to have weight one hundredth, now it, it has weight one tenth, ten times more. And every digit used to be 1,000, now it's 100. So the weights, when I'm shifting the whole number to the left by one position, all weights are actually multiplied by 10. Which means that if this is rational, then this will be rational as well. Since, again, rational uh, multiplied or divided by, by 10 is, is, is rational. So again, to prove that this one is rational, it's quite sufficient to prove that this is rational. Why am I talking about this? I would like to reduce my problem of a general periodic decimal uh, number to be reduced to the one which has zero point and then the period, basically, which is certain number of digits which repeated infinite number of times. So generally speaking, I can actually tell that let's consider the number which looks like this p1, p2, etc., pn and parenthesis means that, that this is repeated infinite number of times p1, p2, pn are some digits and 
Each digit actually has a weight. This one has weight 1 over 10, this has 1 over 100, and this 1 over 10 to the nth degree, right? Because we have n uh, digits, and each uh, position shifted to the right is uh, multiplies the weight by 1 tenth. So, this is a representation of an infinite number, decimal fraction, um, which has a period of length n, n digits, and each digit in the period is p1, p2, etc., pn. This is a general concept of a, as general as it can be, uh, a, a, a periodic number. And if we prove that this one is rational, then obviously all, no, all other numbers, something like, uh, I don't know, d1, d2, decimal uh, separator, d3, d4, and then the period, p1, etc., pn, this is more general, and any sign, plus or minus. Obviously, this also will be general, will be rational, because we have already proved that this piece is general. So all this one, all these numbers are different from this by basically aging something or multiplying by something. And that does not change the rationality. So the most difficult part of the whole proof that any periodic decimal uh, fraction uh, is rational is to prove that this is rational. This type of decimal fractions um, is rational. Well, actually, this one is also not very difficult. Let me go back to this uh, progression, sum of the progression which we already considered before. Now, uh, actually, I will use a different letter here. Okay. That would be better, because n is already taken as the number of digits in, in this thing. Well, here is what's important. Um, number, which is written in this particular form, where the sequence p1, pn is repeated an uh, infinite number of times, can be represented not only this way, using the following, p1 times 10 one tenths plus p2 times one hundredths plus etc plus pn times 1 over 10 to the nth degree plus this is a periodic fraction, right? So I, I'm continuing actually, plus P1 again, because that would be again P1 10 to the n plus 1, right? After 10 to the nth, next weight is 10 to the n plus 1, plus P2 times 1 over 10 to the n plus 2, etc., plus Pn times 1 over 10 to the 2n, n plus n. But this is not the end of it, right? It's an infinite. So again, there will be another one, and another one, and another one. Every time, weights will be, you see, this is 10 to the first degree, this is 10 to the n plus first degree. Then it will be 10 to the 2n plus n degree, p1 over 10 to the 2n plus 1 plus p2 over n to the 2n plus 2, etc., plus pn times 10 to the 3n, etc., up to infinity. This is actually what this means. Now, how can we summarize this? Well, it's actually the same thing as this, because if you will consider this piece, which is obviously a rational number, which, by the way, is less than 1, because p1 is definitely, it's, it's a digit from 0 to 9. So maximum, but it can be, p1 over 10 will be maximum 9 tenths, right? And this will be maximum 9 hundredths. And this will be maximum 9 over 10 to the nth degree. So the whole thing, as a maximum when all digits 
finite number of digits, n digits, uh, are equal to 9, the maximum number can be 0 0.99, etc., 9, n times, which is less than 1. So basically, what I'm saying is that this number is our Q. Well, let's not call it a Q. Let's call it, let's use a different number. Let's use a different type. Let's call it A. A. Okay. If this number is A, now, what is this number? Well, look at this. This is P1 times 1 over 10 to the first degree. And this is P1 over 10 to the n plus first degree. This is 100, which is 10 squared, and this is 10 to the n plus 2. So every member of this sequence is different by every member of this sequence by 10 to the nth degree. So we basically have to multiply this a times 1, 10 to the nth degree. That's what my point is. So if this is a, then this is a times 1 over 10 to the nth degree because each member, as you see, is multiplied by 1 over 10 to the nth. How about this one? Same thing. We multiply again by 10 to the nth degree. So it's a times 10 to the 2n. That's what this member is. Etc. up to infinity. So if I will want to represent it in the this particular way, I will represent it in, as the following. S is equal to A plus A times Q times A times Q squared, because that's what 10 to the 2n degree is, plus A to the Q cube up to infinity. Where A is this expression, finite, mind you, and Q is uh, this is Q, 1 over 10 to the nth degree. Now, having said this, I can definitely say that this is A times 1 plus Q plus etc. to infinity. And this is just a, another particular, let me just put a couple of more numbers here, Q squared, etc. So where A is, um, where A is, uh, 0 0.P1, P2, etc., Pn, finite, I'm not putting this as a periodic fraction, and Q is 1 over 10 to the nth degree. So that's what my number, this, actually mean. The first period is this, a, which is A. The second period, P1 to Pn, is represented by, by this, which is A times Q, because it's shifted to the right by n positions, which means it's multiplied by 1 over 10 to the nth degree. The third one will be Q squared, etc., etc. So, how can we summarize this? Well, using exactly the same principle as, uh, as before. Um, the only difference is this multiplier A, which is a finite rational number, so it's very simple. So you have S over A is equal 1 plus Q plus etc. Uh, then you multiply it by Q, so S times Q divided by A is Q plus Q squared plus etc. Now, for finite uh, number, it will be q to the k, and this will be q to the k plus 1, and then we will uh, 
say that the k tends to infinity. Anyway, right now let's subtract one from another, and what we will have um, we will have s over a times one minus q equals one minus q to the k plus one s over a, s over a times q, so that's the left part, and on the right, this one will be reduced, so only the first and the last will actually remain, this is the plus sign, this is the minus sign. Now, as k tends to infinity for a q like we have here, obviously if you multiply q by itself infinite number of times, it tends to zero, so the uh, ultimate formula is S is equal to um, A over 1 minus Q. That's what it is. Where A is this and Q is this. Now, and this is obviously a rational number, by the way, because it's the result of some elementary operation over rational numbers, which we had before. So, what we wanted to prove is that any periodic um, fraction actually represents a rational number. Now, two things I would like to make. Number one, let's make a quick check that the number which I liked so much, 0 0.142857, period, is indeed one sentence. Well, let's use this formula. A is 0 0.142857. No parenthesis. It's a finite number. Q is 1 over 10, how many digits? Six digits, so it's 1 over um, uh, 1 minus 1 over 10 to the 6th degree. Right? Okay. Let's calculate it very quickly. Uh, 10 to the 6th is a million, right? So we'll have 0 0.142857 divided by 10 times 1 million minus one, it's nine, 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 nine. Ten to the six goes to the top. This is exactly the number of positions which we have here. So this is ten to the six makes this fraction an integer number, right? We shift the decimal separator six position to the right. So it's one, four, two, eight, five, seven, divided by nine, 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 nine. Well, I'm not going to do it, but I believe anybody can divide 999 by 142857 and get 7. So this is equal to 1 7. So this periodic fraction, 142857 in period, is exactly 1 7. And this is just an example of a periodic decimal fraction which represents a rational number. So. One thing is that we have proved that any finite or infinite periodic decimal uh, number with the fractional part, obviously, uh, represents a rational number. Next lecture, I will prove the opposite, that any rational number of this type of any other rational number can be represented as a finite or infinite periodic, the word periodic is extremely important, decimal number. <clears throat> now, and, 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 and here we have basically a different approach to rational numbers. We can define them as something like this, or more formal representation as I showed before, with the two integers separated by bar. Or we can say that rational numbers are represented in the way of the decimal fractions with certain weights assigned to each position. 
um, but all rational numbers are either finitely represented by the decimals, or if it's an infinite representation with a fractional part going to infinity, it must be periodic. That's what's very important. So periodic decimal is exactly the same as rational, and vice versa. Rational is the same as periodic. So next lecture, I will spend uh, for proving that opposite part, that any rational number is actually represented by a periodic decimal. Um, actually, I would like to make one more point here, and this is more philosophical. Um, I can definitely just tell you the fact that rational numbers can be represented by decimals uh, with certain period. And all irrational numbers are aperiodic, non-periodic decimal fractions. This is a fact. Now, why did I bother proving that thing? Obviously, somebody has already proven it. Well, to tell you the truth, I think that the fact by itself uh, doesn't mean much. In, in your life, you, you will most likely never use it at all, or very rarely. What is important is to follow the proof and just the fact that you're logically trying to prove something. You're trying to not only say that, okay, I live in, 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 in a place A and I know that there is a place B where there are certain things which I can find if I will go there. What's important is really to go that way, really to reach that point B, to find the road which goes from A to B, because these are actually educational purposes of all these lectures. Not just um, presenting certain facts, but um, explaining certain things which will lead you to, um, to thinking about how to achieve something, how to prove something. And that's why um, I will spend a lot of different, uh, I will spend a lot of lectures or explanations for just different problems, because solving problems is very important. Now, proof is also a problem solution, if you wish. The problem is the representation of the rational numbers, and we have proven that this can be represented in such and such way. So, for those people who are looking for facts, uh, you will definitely get it from here, but you most likely will be bored with the proof. Actually, I think much more beneficial is really to follow the proof, regardless of what exactly we are trying to prove. It's the logic behind it, it's the steps which you are making, and that's what actually achieves this educational purpose, and that's the goal of all these lectures. I made this little philosophical um, uh, uh, essay um, just because this one of the first actual proofs if, if you can call it a proof, real proof, um, which I was trying to um, present in, in, my, in my lectures. And uh, again, I understand that for certain people it might be a little bit boring. Uh, just don't forget, the purpose is not the fact which I'm proving. The purpose is the logic of the proof itself. That's where educational goal is. Um, okay, thank you. And uh, again, next lecture I will spend proving, by the way, <laughs> proof again, that all rational numbers are represented as a periodic decimal. This is the converse theory. This one is that any decimal fraction which is periodic is rational. Next one will be the other way around. Thank you very much. That's it for today.